dear brothers and sisters. Indeed, uh, I feel great honor to come to speak. Uh, I think the place where I can't pronounce that properly. You see that, that Swamiji. <laughs> Actually, I have this sort of privilege to visit a small rock. Kanab Kumari, from where is his boat start? I think his sort of vision uh, already, I think, the ancient Indian sort of thought, Indian knowledge can be useful, irrespective of what continent, what nation. So he start the journey from there. So then, he established World Parliament of Religion. I think his sort of a vision, I think, great. But then, a follower of, I mean, people involved in that organization, they simply carry the name, and occasionally, some will say, uh, the World Parliament of Religion. I participated, you see, uh, I think few few occasions. One I remember Cape Town, uh, one in Australia, one in I think Chicago or America. Anyway, so when the recent uh, meeting in. Uh, I think in Melbourne, I think, Melbourne. I express, you see, this organization, something very important, but looks, your organization, a little bit sleepy. <laughs> so then later, you see, they uh, came to see me uh, invitation. <laughs> So that last their meeting in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, where? Right. No. Salt Lake City. Uh, then they told me, since you expressed that way, so we are working more so uh, uh, active or more uh, more So then I accepted, of course, I'm very much not really where they are, but then because of illness. Uh, I could not participate. So in any way, I really uh, feel great honor from connection. Uh, now, of course, this, this meeting provide me a meeting or reunion with some of my long time friends. When I look, my long time friends you see, then that reminds me, I'm also quite old. <laughs> <laughs> like Maruta, you there. <laughs> well, he was working as a license officer. Very young, the very active, now looks quite old. <laughs> and Matari. Uh, my first visit to Europe was uh, 1973. You interviewed me. What is the reason you have some interest to visit Europe? Then I told, I consider myself as a citizen of the world. Do you remember? <laughs> so this, uh, I say, uh, event provides me meeting my long time, my friend. I think all my friend, not only just a friend or superficial, but from deep inside. So I really appreciate our friendship, that kind of friendship. I really appreciate.
So from the Buddhist viewpoint, uh, not only Buddhism, but also the uh, Indian tradition, we, uh, we have the sort of concept of rebirth. Oh. So one lifetime create genuine friendship. The impact that will carry life after life. So, in any way, thank you very much. You invited me here. Yeah. Now, the topic, as I briefly mentioned, that subtle, I think long sighted, well, no, far sighted, -sighted vision. So, then, I'm one of the students of ancient Indian philosophy, Indian knowledge, including logic, and ancient Indian knowledge about human mind, human psychology. Uh, when I first came to India as a refugee, in 1959, my only concern is how to preserve our own so this knowledge. Then with help of Pandit uh, Nehru, and of course, come from in India, and also various concerned the state government. Eventually, we uh, re-establish a major learning center over several centuries. You see, these uh, monastic institution truly uh, a learning center. And sometimes we describe some of these uh, monastic institutions uh, we call Nalendra of Tibet. Uh, so we re-establish uh, in India because of the uh, availability of land, and then these uh, re-establish in Karnataka state, in Mysore state. So, so like that. And also, you see, we asked Pandit Nehru, do you want a separate Tibetan school? So Pandit Nehru fully supported. Uh, so immediately he asked the education minister, Mr. Mali or Mali or something. Oh. Ka. Oh. Oh. So he, as a chair and committee, set up. Tibet society for education, like that. So these work mainly preservation of our own tradition, including our language. Then, more wider contact with, you see, people from different continents, different countries, particularly scientists. Then, it become clear. Our ancient knowledge, ancient Indian tradition, which we kept over a thousand years, we say alive, right? To rigorous study, not few moment meditation or something, or chanting, not that. At least 20, 30 years rigorous study. The root text memorized. Then According commentary, each word explain. Then use extensively logic, debate. So that's not in the tradition. The Shantarakshita is the eighth century, invited by a Tibetan emperor. Uh, he himself, at that time, eighth century, uh, I think the most sort of famous uh, say, scholar. A monk, Bhikshu, and great philosopher, and great logician. So we can judge about his knowledge. Uh, see, we, we, his, some of his writing available. When we read this, then we can we can say, oh, that author is truly great scholar and a logician. So therefore, uh, you see, 
when I sort of uh, meet, as I mentioned earlier, see, people, more serious people from different sort of field, then it seems to me, oh, the knowledge which we get originally <coughs> come from Nalanda, there's something relevant to today's world. Number of scientists now showing interest on uh, some of these philosophical views, such as quantum physics. I think detailed explanation, uh, we call Madhimika philosophy or Chitta Mantra philosophy, uh, is actually, it seems to me, the background of quantum physics. So uh, we have sort of better position to explain about quantum physics. The model, the scientist, quantum physicist, you see, they are up to a certain level, you see, they have a certain explanation, they can explain with competence. Then deeper, deeper, they themselves are not very clear. <laughs> Whereas, the, our knowledge, all these ancient Indian masters, you see, they, I think, such a way, you see, to Shiltao, 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 very precisely, very detailed, so like that. And then also, you know, the psychology, human mind, the system of human mind, human emotion. Sometimes I so a little bit bold, I think too bold, you see, mentioning or expressing the modern psychology, compare ancient Indian psychology, they say, looks, Modern psychology looks like a kindergarten level. <laughs> Ancient Indian psychology highly developed, really. So now today, uh, I am a first lady, you see many scientists really showing eagerness to learn from this knowledge. Then I convinced now these ancient Indian knowledge which, which we get uh, thoroughly is now uh, seems the time come. Some service help from that knowledge to humanity, not just Buddhist, but humanity. Psychology and logic and logic and any subject we can use. Some occasion when we have sort of a meeting with scientists, this is some scientist, you see, after the visit of the courtyard debate. So they were very much impressed. Some scientists told me well, that method can be used some other subject. He asked me. Then I told him, well, certainly. This is just method to Kasuri, to make clear the point. So use the logic, logical approach. Uh, then one occasion, I think one American I think scientist, uh, I can't remember his name. You see, he so impressed. You see, the way we debate. So during our sort of discussion. Uh, with scientists and some different uh, monks also there. You see, he, uh, the copying, you see, using this, or, or see, he, he raised a certain point with some other sort of scientists and then use his reason with this, you see, Tibetan start. <laughs> so, in any way, uh, in, in the human mind, the scientist, really eager to learn. Then philosophical views, fields also, they say many showing interest. Then overall, now today, we have some kind of crisis, the, I'll say the mental crisis. That also leads to the mental crisis. Uh, so mostly 
mental, mental principle, the principle. Hmm? Without that, you see, the education become instrument for create more trouble. Education's supposed to see to bring further development and reduce problem. But existing education system sometimes you see create more problem. Why? Education is related with our brain. Human brain is something very unique. Now open of that brain is education. So the good brain must be combined with warm heartedness. Then all these knowledge become constructive. These knowledge combined with anger, hatred, or too much self-centered attitude, then this knowledge become troublemaker. Obviously, many troublemaker actually on this planet. I think they are quite well educated. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes it seems uneducated people looks more honest or better educated people. <laughs> so now that I think not only I, I think that that's really related with humanity in order to create happy humanity uh, education is key factor. So education is a must go uh, along the side. The warm heartedness, some kind of combination of work together, warm heartedness and brilliant brain work together, then our education will be a uh, constructive sort of, uh, factor like that. So then, uh, ancient Indian sort of tradition, Indian knowledge, firstly about mind, about emotion, how to tackle these destructive emotions. Uh, that's a very relevant today's world. Then, in order to develop warm heartedness, uh, if we rely on religion, will not cover 7 million human beings. Today, actually, out of 7 billion, uh, 1 billion human beings, non believers <coughs> So now, we need, secularly, according to Indian understanding, secular means not uh, based or depend on religion. Uh, in the West, uh, the very word secular, when my friend uh, has some reservation, they, in the West, the secular, they usually you see, get this sort of impression, a uh, little bit sort of negative towards religion. Uh, even some of my friends say, uh, or say the atheism and secularism, this is some connection. According to Indian understanding, no. Secular means respect all religions and also respect non-believer. That concept, I think, very relevant to today's world. India's own constitution also, you see, very much sort of connected with secular. Not at all, it's something negative towards religion. So respect. Uh, uh, all religion and also respect non-believers. So the, according to that sort of concept and teaching moral principle uh, on the basis of scientific finding. Now many scientists now they say calm mind is very important for us physical health, constant anger, constant hatred, actually eating our immune system. They actually sort of experimented. They found the per person, people, 
people who have some sort of training about compassion, they are mind much more peaceful. Result, their health also much better. So nowadays we use we use the word healthy mind, healthy body. So therefore, um, and then more important, nowadays is some uh, scientists, serious scientists, they say basic human nature is more compassionate. This is a really hopeful sign. Basic human nature is anger. There is no hope. But basic human nature is more compassionate. It's quite so, if you think properly, as the way we born, where we survive, totally depend on others' affection, particularly mother's affection. Without that, we die. So therefore, the, uh, on the basis of scientific finding and of common sense, no matter how sort of educated and how wealthy person, I think without a smile, how do people remain little distance? Even a oh, person without a sort of money, without sort of what's the day, uh, some other thing, but showing smile, genuine smile, genuine sort of warm hearted feeling. Then, not only human being, even dogs, they also love. They don't care about your wealth or, or your power. <coughs> they don't care. Only they care, smile. And our way, our use our eye, a sincere. Then dogs appreciate, cats also. So sometimes I think animals are more honest. You human beings, because of this brain, because of our education, uh, uh, for example, I usually see uh, telling people uh, that we have this smile. Smile is, I think, the proper the way to express your own feeling. Uh, but we so clever. This smile also sometimes becomes an artificial smile or diplomatic smile. <laughs> Scastic smile. Isn't it? Such smile instead of bring uh, sort of friendship or inner peace or sometimes more suspicion. <laughs> so so in any way, so today we really need education about our inner value. So existing education system very much oriented about material value. When the subject about truth, honesty, these things come, usually rely on religion. So as I mentioned earlier, we will not cover seven billion human beings. And then also religion, there are different sort of views, different philosophy. So complications there. So India's tradition, secular way, teach about inner value. So with uh, co collaboration where collaboration some India, some institution such as because Tata institution and some other some universities and also in, in America, the Emory University uh, and some other organization. You see now we're really working, uh, making draft about a secular uh, uh, education about sort of moral ethics, strictly secular way. So in this respect, India's thousand-year-old tradition of, firstly, Ahimsa. Ahimsa means Ahimsa with the anger will not go together. Ahimsa, very much based on motivation level, Karuna. So, thousand year old in the tradition, Ahimsa automatically comes with Karuna. And then secular. Uh, so, this ancient Indian sort of tradition, 
seems now very relevant to today's world. So, so now only thing is, the modern Indian is not much pay attention about these studies. <laughs> Sometimes I jokingly telling people, uh, you see, you Indian uh, more westernized. Uh, your culture, your way of life, also now creates some kind of materialistic life, materialistic culture. That's why so, so many corruptions there, all levels. So, our, our thousand year old sort of tradition, corruption, corrupted action, also you see, some kind of holiday, non violence. Without proper sort of your right, can't make money. Also, some kind of uh, violence against ahimsa. Naturally, ahimsa, as I mentioned earlier, ahimsa and karuna go together. So, if you have karuna, you must respect their right. You have no special right to to use their money or something like that. Something like that. So therefore, I think ancient Indian uh, knowledge, uh, not just a true prayer, but true sort of reasoning, a true logical approach. Uh, I think Indian ancient sort of knowledge, now really, I feel, now it seems very relevant to today's world. So please, my Indian brothers, sisters, Please now pay more attention about your thousand year old your tradition. Not just to catch some puchas, or some or say, rituals, no. Uh, or study. See, about human mind, about human emotion. Uh, and then <coughs> the reason, the ahimsa. Uh, and then also the, with that, which is harmony. I think India is the <coughs> only country where all religious faith live together. Occasionally there's some problem here and there. That's understandable. Uh, so basically, I think India is the only nation where, besides the homegrown different religion, but all world major religious tradition now uh, settled in this country. Wonderful. So I often say telling uh, some concerned officials uh, that come to India, you see, India should now make active rule regarding promotion of religious harmony. And particularly nowadays, you see, they, in some cases, in some area, religion itself now dividing, not only dividing, but killing. So the India's tradition or rich harmony is very, very relevant. So over a billion populated nation, in spite of a lot of problems, but rich harmony, basically, I think, really you get this, not only just political reason, over 3,000 years, you see, you have this sort of tradition, rich harmony. So these are something very important. So, now that's about the ancient Indian Kasoda. Indian thought, or Indian knowledge, or something relevant to this world. So these, uh, not, I'm, I'm talking this just the intellectual level, but through my own experience, now it became clear. So this ancient Indian sort of knowledge, now uh, very much relevant to this world. So my, if may I say so, uh, my elder brother, sisters, now, okay, <laughs> now this younger one, uh, pay more attention about your thousand year old tradition. And the old people also, you see, advise your children, grandchildren, grand grandchildren. Uh, that's all, thank you. Now I, I prefer a question and answer.
some in, uh, interaction, uh, interaction. And since there's many people, experienced people, so I would, I would like to have some suggestions or some criticisms. Thank you.